What if you could build your own AI apps for work to 10x your productivity? No big dev team, no endless coding and no stress. Imagine describing exactly what you need, whether it's a sales dashboard, a marketing assistant or a financial tracker. And you click a couple of buttons and you have a working version of the app ready to make your team work smarter and faster. Well, that's exactly what Data Button makes possible. Unlike other AI app builders, Data Button is focused on AI apps that are specifically designed for work. Perfect fit for a team of 10 to 100 people. You can start from ready-made templates for sales, revops or marketing or build something totally custom. And soon with native data integrations with HubSpot, Mixpanel or Google Analytics 4, you'll be able to connect your own data and build powerful apps on top of it. So today in this video, I'll show you how data button works and how can you use data button to create your own AI apps for work without spending weeks coding or let's say spending a fortune. So let's quickly get started. So this right here is data button and this is the AI coding platform specifically built for creating AI apps for work. And this right here is the platform that I've been talking about. And again, to access data button, all you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below and head over to databutton.com and you can sign up for a new account and start using it right away. And as you can see, it says 10x yourself with AI, create AI apps and automations to do more with less. And towards the center, you can find an input box and all you have to do is to just explain what kind of app you want to build and hit enter and the AI will get to work. And again, if I click on this add integration button right here, as you can see, I can directly integrate Google Sheets, HubSpot, Notion, Google Calendar, QuickBooks, among others. So I can directly integrate all these into the app that I'm building. So in short, Data Button is a platform that allows you to build AI powered apps to simplify your work and automate a lot of things. For example, let's say I have a digital marketing agency and of course I'll have to do SEO, right? So in this context, let's just say I want to create a AI powered SEO content optimizer tool. And if I were to, let's say, pay for such kind of a tool, I'll have to spend at least $100 per month. Now, in this context, all I have to do is to just explain my requirements to data button and hit enter. And the AI will build a full fledged tool, like an internal tool that I can use within my organization and I can 10x the productivity. And also it becomes pretty simple for my team to SEO optimize content in just a single click, right? And that is exactly what data button makes possible. And this is one of many use cases of using data button. And again, the incredible cool thing about using data button is that you have two options. If you want to, you can head over to the template section and here you will be able to find all these templates that you can start using and even customize in just a single click. For example, here we have lead scoring, follow up agent, automated sales pipeline tracker, deal alert agent, outbound campaign manager, sales reporting tool. I mean, all of these are examples of tools that most businesses will use, right? So here in the template section, you can find a lot of these tools. And if this is some kind of tool that you're actually looking for, you can click on the start building option and start building on top of the template right here. So obviously it will make your work a lot easier, right? And the second option is that if you were not able to find the tool or let's say your use case mentioned in the template section, you can head back and you can actually give a totally custom brief or let's say a prompt and you can start building a custom tool and you can start building a custom tool. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll first of all log into my data button account. And as you can see, I'm now logged into my data button account and I'll start with a prompt something like this. And it says, I want to build an SEO content optimizer website where I can enter the URL of a particular web page. And upon clicking a button, our website will use AI to make the existing content SEO optimized and show us the updated content. We can then copy and publish it to our website. And I also explicitly mentioned that we will use open AI API to optimize the content. And now all I got to do is to click on this build it button right here. And there you go. It says prompt enhanced and okay. It is now creating all these pages and planning the next steps. So it is doing the initial preparation work. So let's see adding styles. All right. So seems like the initial version of the app is ready and towards the right side, I can find all these tasks and towards the left side, I can also find a preview of the app and now it says hello I can see you have made a great progress on your SEO content optimizer app and now here are the remaining tasks we can work on OPT2 that is create a backend API to fetch and optimize web content using open AI all right that looks good then we have third that is connect the front end to the optimization API okay and then we also have plan next development steps together and it also says which task would you like to start with so I can simply enter Please start with OPT2 and I'll hit enter. All right, so let's see. So it says, would you like to start working on OPT2? Create a backend API to fetch and optimize web content using OpenAI. 
yes i'll click on yes start task all right so data button has started working on the second task and right now it says let me break down what all right so it is now asking us to provide our open ai api key to enable content optimization functionality so i'll quickly go ahead and open a new tab and open platform.openai.com and i'm already logged in so i'll click on settings api keys then create a new secret key and i'll enter the name for the time being let's enter data button default project create secret key all right so the key is in here so i'll copy the same head back and paste the api key in here and i can click on the send button so basically we are going to use open ai api to sort of optimize the content and it says great now let me install the required packages and start building the api and again the packages are installed so these are all the tasks that the ai will do so right now it is creating the fast api endpoint to accept urls implement web scraping integrate with open ai and finally test the endpoint to ensure it returns our optimized content okay so as you can see it is even testing the endpoint to make sure everything works so it has actually created the backend and now it is testing to make sure everything works all right okay so it seems like everything is done and it says optimized content endpoint is now ready and working perfectly it can accept web page urls and extract the main content send the content to open ai for seo optimization okay return both original and optimized content with word counts and okay so next up we'll like to start with opt3 all right so connect the front end to the optimization api and i'll say start working on opt3 and hit enter okay yes mark is done all right so everything is now complete and it says the app is fully functional and real url ai power is your content generation everything is in here and it also says the api test was successful with a process the url okay it actually processed the wikipedia url and it tested the functionality and everything works is what it says and now i'll open a random web page so this writer is a blog post on using open ai api and now what i'll do is i'll copy okay let me copy the url and paste it in here and i'll click on optimize content well it says failed to optimize content please try again okay so what i'll do is i'll copy the error code real quick and now i'll say i get the following error and uh, okay when i enter a url and hit optimize content button and i'll paste the error message and hit enter and let's uh, let's wait for it all right so the issue is now fixed and it says the issue is clear the api requires authentication but users aren't logged in for a public seo optimization tool this should be accessible without requiring user accounts okay in the sidebar click on the three dots icon all right so it makes sense right so here in the api section as you can see here we have the content optimizer api and this shield means that it requires uh, authentication so right now we haven't really implemented authentication into our app so what i'll do is i'll click on this three dots icon and i'll enable this option that says disable auth and there you go that is gone and hopefully everything should work now right so i can try copying the link again and now i'll head back and paste the url and click on optimize content and hopefully it works so it says ai is optimizing your content analyzing content structure and seo opportunities so let's wait for it all right so there you go our app is now fully functional and we entered a url and clicked on the optimize button and it says the original word count was 3000 words long so the optimized content word count is 1089 word count difference is 63.4 and here we can find our optimization summary and it says improved heading structure enhanced keyword density improved readability and flow then we have added semantic keywords engaging and value content and again towards the left side we can find the original content and towards the right side we can find the optimized content as well so right now it is displaying the content in markdown and again we can ask the ai to format it and display it on the screen so the basic functionality of our internal tool that is seo optimizing a content by giving a direct url to a web page is now working so in a similar fashion if i want to let's say add even more features into the app all i gotta do is to give follow prompts in here and i can get it going right 
Next up, let's just say, okay, right now the issue is that pretty much anyone will be able to use this particular app, right? So we don't really have any authentication in place. Next step, let's just go ahead and ask the AI to add a full-fledged authentication such that only logged in users will be allowed to use the app. So I can give a prompt and I'll say, Next step, I want to add full-fledged user authentication to the app and I want to modify the app such that only logged in users are allowed to use the app. So I want you to add a login and sign up pages and add or let's say implement full-fledged user authentication. So this right here is the prompt I'll give and now I'll hit enter. Okay, let's see. All right, so there you go. I propose creating the following task that is implement user authentication with login and sign up pages. So here we have the current state and the requirements are to build a login page, a sign up page and protect the main page that is the app page, add navigation, user, session management, redirect logic, post login experience. So all of that looks good. So I'll click on yes, create task. Okay, so created OPT5 and next up, we want to work on OPT5. Okay, so would you like to mark OPT3 as complete? Yes. And again, the cool thing is that right now we are in the preview window, right? So if I go to, let's say the plan option right here, I'll be able to see the complete plan that the AI has planned. So in this case, we have completed one, two and three. And next up, we have four and five. So plan next development steps together. And again, OPT5 is the current uh, user authentication implementation plan that we just uh, added. And next, we will start with OPT5. So I can either give a direct prompt to the AI asking it to start working on OPT5 or I can simply click on the start task button right next to o OPT5 and let's see. So it says let's start working on OPT5 and let's see. It says thinking. All right. So it says perfect. Let me start working on OPT5 and implement user authentication with login and sign up pages. So here we can find all these tasks. Examine existing stack auth configuration, create professional login page, sign up page, protect the main app, add navigations and all that. And while that is being done, let's quickly explore the UI of data button. So every time you're about to, let's say, build an app towards the center here, you will find the live preview of the app and you're able to use it. And again, if you want to open the preview in a full screen, let's say in a new tab, all you got to do is to click on this button that says open preview and you'll be able to find a full screen preview of the app opened in a new tab like this. So as you can see here, we have the option to enter a URL and I can optimize the content. And next up towards the left side, this is where you'll be able to find all these API routes within your app, all the UI components, UI files, media files, if any internal storage libraries. So you can find all of that in here. And again, if I click on, for example, let's say this one right here, I'll be able to find the code for that particular file. For example, in this case, let's open app provider. And as you can see, this writer is the code. If I click on home, I'll be able to find the preview. And again, if I click on this edit code button towards the top, I'll be able to find the code for that particular page. And again, if you want to check your website for responsiveness, you have the option to break it down to let's say tablet view and also smartphone view. And as you can see, our website is 100% mobile responsive. So I'll put it back to desktop mode. And next up, if I click on the settings icon towards the top, I'll be able to find all the app configuration in here. For example, I can find the initial prompt that we give, then the name and target audience and all that information in here. Next up, if I click on agent, if you want to add custom instructions to the agent, you can enter that in here. And if I move over to the production tab, I'll be able to create a MCP server out of this app, or let's say turn an existing API endpoint into an MCP server, or I can even add a custom domain and publish and deploy the app. Then if I go to the design, section i'll be able to enter my design and theme guidelines in here next up in the secret section we can add all the secrets or let's say all the environment variables for example earlier we added open AI api key and i can find that in here and just in case if i want to edit it i can click on the pencil icon and edit it then here we have access so you can add collaborators to this code base and also you can find all the packages that are installed so in this case we are actually using open ai for optimizing the content so you can see open AI packages in here and again for extracting the textual content from all the web page that we give or let's say the URL it is using beautiful soup 4 okay looks good and now I can close this one and again once you implement authentication if you click on this users and data button right here you will be able to find all the database tables that you have and also all the users registered on your app and currently we are adding authentication and after that's done we'll be able to find that data in here and again once everything is done when you're ready, 
you can click on this deploy button towards the top and click on this deploy app option and again within seconds data button itself will deploy and make your website or tool or whatever stuff that you developed using data button live on the internet such that anyone can access it and once you have authentication ready you can deploy it and make it live and everyone from your team will be able to use the internal tool that we just developed in which ways the AI is still working on adding user authentication so let's wait till it is done and I'll see you afterwards all right so seems like authentication implementation is now complete and as I can see right now we are in the sign in page so we don't really have a user account right so if I click on users and data and if I move to users as you can see here we don't have any users yet so I'll click on the sign up option and next up I'll enter my email and password so let's enter this email a random password oops password confirm password and I'll click on sign up okay so there you go we are now logged in and I'm able to access the app and if I click on this icon right here I'll be able to find my email and also the logout option and now if I go to the users and data tab and if I go to users as you can see here we have the email ID so this is the email ID that I used to add let's say sign up for a new account so pretty much all the features like the main features that we asked for is now working and next step now that we have the authentication and also the core functionality of the app working the obvious next step is to deploy and make it live right so towards the top right you can find a button that says deploy so I'll click on the same and now I can give it a name for now it looks good and now I'll click on this deploy app option right here so it says starting deployment and within a couple of seconds data button will automatically deploy the app all by itself and give you a live URL so this is going to be the URL and you will be able to access your app whenever you visit this URL right here and not just that after the deployment is done if you want to you can head over to settings go to production and enter a custom domain and verify the domain and do all this DNS configuration and after that you will be able to host your app within your main domain or let's say subdomain or wherever you want to so you have options for that too in which case let's wait for the AI to complete deploying and then we can go ahead and try accessing it all right so as you can see it says successfully deployed the app and if I click on this button right here I'll be able to use the app and for the time being this right here is our app address and again as mentioned earlier now only authenticated people will be allowed to use the app so we have the option to sign in with Google and I'll click on this sign up option right here and let's say enter a dummy email for the time being a password and I'll click on sign up okay okay so verification and validation and all that is working I'll click on sign up okay let me see okay here we are logged in and for the time being we haven't really added any let's say uh, email verification stuff but if you want to you can actually do that and now if I head back and if I click on users and data and go to users there you go here we have both the accounts that we created just now so that's it that is how simple it is to create a AI powered internal app for work to make you 10x productive and also increase the overall productivity of your team and again if you do want to let's say create apps like this like AI powered apps all you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below head over to databutton.com and you can start from one of these templates that they already have or you can give a custom prompt and ask the AI to build the internal tool tailored to your specific use case and that's how simple it is and I hope you guys found this video useful if yes make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one